Hi, welcome to the channel Witness for Jesus. I'm going to talk about the Jehovah's Witness teaching about 1914 and show how it's not a scriptural teaching. Also, there's something I noticed which seems to be new light from the Watchtower. See if you agree with me as we go along. The year 1914 is central to Jehovah's Witness teachings. It's like a cornerstone of what they believe. Why? Well, they believe that since 1914 we've been living in the last days and Armageddon is coming very soon. This teaching about the year 1914 is easily proven wrong using the scriptures. Preparing for this video, I considered going into the numbers and dates, referring back to Daniel chapter 4 as the Watchtower does. However, I realised there's a far easier way to prove 1914 to be totally incorrect using just a few Bible verses. So let's look at what Watchtower say about this year, 1914. Of course, they've changed the teaching over the years, but right now in 2017, they teach this. There's a quote on the screen, and to summarise it, in October of 1914, Jesus was installed as King of the Kingdom in Heaven. And here is a little more information from JW.org. In what form does Christ return? He was resurrected as an invisible spirit person. Then he went to heaven and sat at God's right hand. Much later, Jesus was brought before Jehovah God, the Ancient of Days, who granted Jesus power to rule over mankind. So Jesus returns, not as a human, but as an invisible king. What will Jesus do when he arrives? When Jesus arrives invisibly with his angels, he will judge mankind. He will destroy wicked people, but grant everlasting life to those who accept him as king. That last point there is news to me. It says Jesus will return invisibly when he comes to judge the nations. Now, is that new light? Because if it is new light, it's really interesting. I mean, if Jesus is always going to be invisible, doesn't that mean that they can claim he's returned to judges, but we won't need to see him? I wonder how that might play out. So make a comment if you remember them ever teaching this before. I'm not sure, sure if it's new light. Anyway, Back to 1914, let's address this teaching using the scriptures. There's something really obvious which, need, which uh, it seems Jehovah's Witnesses don't seem to think about. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28, when Jesus has been resurrected. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Okay, so this tells us that all authority had already been given to Jesus, not just in heaven, but also on earth. He was already given all authority at that time. He's using past tense. He's been given all authority. How could he have all authority, but not be king yet? Then he says at the end of verse 19, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus here has sent out his disciples to do the work and he assures them, I am with you always. Ask yourself, if Jesus was given all authority back then in 33 AD and if he was going to be with us always, why are Jehovah's Witnesses teaching us that Jesus was not ruling for 1900 years? The Watchtower is saying that for some unexplained reason, he waited until 1914 to cast Satan out of heaven and establish his kingdom. Watchtower seemed confused on this issue. While they suggest that Jesus helped his disciples during the 1900 year period, a quote from their website referring to the present day says, Thus, Jesus is no longer sitting at his father's right hand waiting he is ruling as king, and soon he will eliminate all his enemies. So are we to believe that Jesus waited, waited for 1900 years, for no explainable reason, as Watchtower is saying? Or are we to believe the Bible, which tells us that Jesus was enthroned as king when he was raised to heaven? Yes, 
the Bible does tell us when Jesus became king. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 is speaking of the father and says he, the father, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is clearly saying that believers are spiritually transferred into the kingdom of God's Son. And of course, Jesus is king of his kingdom. This applies, applied sorry, when Colossians was written around 60 AD. It applied to that early church. Then that chapter in Colossians goes on to say of Jesus... And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Being the head of the body, Jesus has been actively directing his church, which is made up of all believers since the first century. And under the direction of Jesus, the good news has been and continues to be successfully preached to all the earth. Over the centuries, millions of Bibles have been translated and the message of Jesus our Saviour has reached the world, even before Charles Taze Russell was a twinkle in his daddy's eye. And Christians continue this work today. And do you remember what Jesus preached when he was on the earth? Mark chapter 1 tells us, Now after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, preaching the good news of God and saying, The appointed time has been fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has drawn near. Yes, the kingdom of God has drawn near. Did Jesus mean that the kingdom of God would not arrive for another 1,900 years? Or did he mean that it was near? Well, Once Jesus had fulfilled his purpose and died for our sins on the tree, once he had been resurrected and ascended to heaven, the kingdom of God was established. He was ruling as king, as we have seen, and the subjects of that kingdom would be his faithful followers from that time and down through the centuries. There are other scriptures which talk about this kingdom as having already been established, such as 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 12. Walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, is telling the first century congregations, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend and in Philippians we're not told that that's only a future event. So the scriptures clearly indicate that Jesus was enthroned upon returning to heaven and it makes logical sense that Jesus did not wait around for nearly 2,000 years. Now about this 1914 teaching, Watchtower have done some numerical gymnastics with Daniel chapter 4. But but whose calculations are largely irrelevant when you consider that the Bible tells us that Jesus was already given all authority and already had a kingdom established upon his return to heaven. About Watchtower's timeline, there's another glaring error they've made regarding Jesus' return. Watchtower have two returns for Jesus, not one. The Bible is clear that Jesus will return once and in full view of the entire world. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him and those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will beat themselves in grief because of him. Yes, amen. Every eye will see him. I honestly can't work out why Watchtower would totally ignore that verse. Other verses in the Bible make it clear that all will see Jesus returning. So where does the Bible say that Jesus will return invisibly to be king and then return again invisibly to judge the nations? 
The fact is, the Bible teaches that Jesus will return in full view of all the nations, an event which will happen at some point in the future. I do believe we're in the last days, but it's important that we don't set dates. Our focus should be upon living a life serving Yahweh, our God, preaching the good news and bringing glory to the Father through his Son, Jesus. While world events are concerning, the date of Armageddon is irrelevant. The 1914 doctrine, therefore, is simply not biblical. I will link to the video details in the video details to a very thorough article which also debunks the calculations based on Daniel chapter 4. Nelson Barber and then Russell pointed to 1914 in advance and to be honest I think it was a coincidence that World War I started that year. Russell was associated with Nelson Barber and Nelson Barber had already been teaching the 1914 date before he ever met Russell and he was an Adventist. Now, when Russell associated with Barber, um, he then broke away from him and, and decided that um, Jesus was um, enthroned invisibly in 1874 and that Armageddon would come in 1914. In fact, in October 1914. The fact is that World War I actually started at the end of July in 1914. And here's an important point. The Watchtower suggests that the reason World War I broke out is that Satan had been cast down to the earth. They want us to believe that after Jesus triumphed over death and was raised up to heaven, Jesus just left Satan alone for 1900 years until this date came. And it makes no sense really. What makes more sense is what the Bible tells us, that Jesus was enthroned upon his return to heaven and at that time he triumphed over darkness. They also want us to believe that not only did Jesus wait around for 1900 years, but then when he did become king, he again appears to have not done anything in particular for the last 100 years. Jehovah's Witnesses say he's been establishing their organisation but that claim doesn't really um, hold any water. Countless groups around the world have been established and grown over the last hundred years. Look at the Mormons, for example, they number 15 million. The year 1914 as the year of Jesus being king and establishing a kingdom doesn't match with the scriptures at all. In fact, that date has only been of use to the Watchtower Society because it helped them to recruit members for over a century and around 90 years of this, they preached that the generation or people alive in 1914 would still be alive at Armageddon. When that was revealed as a false prophecy, because the people alive in 1914 were dying off, they simply changed that teaching. Nowadays, they teach an overlapping generation in order to hopelessly cling to the 1914 date. Throughout all of this, the king of God's kingdom wasn't given his proper place by the watchtower. Jesus is king of kings, lord of lords. You must confess with your mouth that Jesus is lord and you will be saved. This means that Jesus is your lord and saviour, that he is your mediator. He will forgive your sins if you approach God in prayer and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Follow your shepherd, Jesus not an organisation who changes their teaching all the time, who've admitted that they're not inspired. Follow Jesus, not a man-made organisation. I hope that this information has helped you. Please subscribe to the channel and share this information and see the other videos on this channel and visit jwfacts.com and forjehovah.org for more information. Bye.